Well, today is an exciting day for a couple of reasons. First of all, got my Bonneville out. Nice warm day, car rides good. Love that thing, so parked on winter. Second of all, while it is way too early to plant corn and soybeans yet, because, well, first of all, we haven't hit our federal crop day yet. Second of all, uh, it snowed this week and it's forecasted to snow this coming week. However, we can plant our organic oats and that is what we're gonna, well, we're not gonna do that today. But we're going to start tillage today. So he's already headed out to the field to 9570. I'm going to follow him in the gator because the first time you go out, it's nice to have somebody else following along in the gator so that we can better set the fuel cultivator and we want to see how the dirt is being thrown off the rolling basket and I'll explain that in a little bit. Safety first. Always. So like I mentioned we also want to see how the dirt is being thrown over the rolling baskets and that's because as you guys remember we have chemical systems on these. Uh, we're not using it today because we're in the organic but we have spray nozzles in front and then on our other fuel cultivator we also have spray nozzles in back. Now we want to put spray nozzles in back on this one too. The problem is that this one has three rows of levelers. The other one has two. Therefore, it kind of ruins our ability to put a... What in the heck are you doing there? Saw out the tractor the first time. But ruins the ability to put a row of nozzles right there. So we're seeing how the dirt is being thrown to see if we can spray back. Because some pre-merged chemicals like to be incorporated into the soil. Hence, we will apply it up front and some might be sprayed on top and then we apply it in back depending on what chemical we happen to be spraying at the time. Lower it. I can do that. While I'm in here, I currently have this thing set up so that way the coverage map turns on when this gets flipped on but we're not applying any chemical because of organic so I'm going to change it to uh, the SCV so we can record our tillage correctly. You hold the camera. Yeah, yeah, point at something. <laughs> just, point <laughs> just point it down there. There, I pointed at something. Okay. It's very hard to tell where we left off planting rye last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm I'm getting there. We're still at 2,000 RPM. Man, this thing just... We're not, we're not going very deep. Oh, okay. I'm about to say... 11th gear is where it started bogging down a little bit, but we're still 1960. Are you trying to say you're a better ride planter or what? I guess. I don't know what that was. Whatever it was, it went through the cultivator. It was Dad was saying that his rise up, that he planted mine's not. Huh. You have seed in it? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I drove across here, yeah, nothing around another rise up. And I got over there and like rise up. I can't believe planting day made that big difference. Not in December, you want to Not in December. I mean, I planted December 5th. I think you were like the week ahead of me. I kind of got baffled. Okay, the button. Underneath my jacket. Oh, this feels weird. I haven't done this in a while. Dust of flying, 60 degrees out. How, well, what's the ground temp at, you think? 30, 35. <laughs> I'd say it's probably pretty cold. Oh, yeah. Trucks coming out yet. I close the 40s. I learned in soybean class that 
opt I think it was optimal soybean planting temperature 75 for ground temp, but you can plant it at ground temp need to be at least 50. I think optimal is 75. I don't know, this is Minnesota. We, 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 difference. Today, if you plant it, it can be 30 degrees. Yeah, well, we, we plant it as fast as we possibly can, and it always turns out good. So, I, more about ground conditions. The ground's a nice shape. Plenty early to rip out But it can sit there a long, long time before it does that. <laughs> Pump up to 12 years. So, oh! Uh, I'm curious. What if we put it. In auto, and it shifts too, or what? Do do yeah, it's supposed to shift. So what did the take while you're playing? Where's that tile over there? I can't remember right now. I'm put a little red dealy bobber on. Okay, there's some red dealy bobbers in the back of the game. That's, that's what I was doing yesterday when your mom started the whole the, the fire side on fire. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had the fire department out of place yesterday. It was my fault. I found out. Too. <laughs> Did she tell you that? Every one time she told the story, it started with Brian was burning. <laughs> <laughs> the only good news is, is that, so in our backyard we have like, like one area of grass that's like not as good as the rest. Oh, we haven't, I, 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 I want to get it done yet, it's still from building the house. Yeah, from building the house we have one area of grass we never really planted. Anyways, the fire went along this line right between our good grass and our bad grass and it perfectly burned all the bad stuff. Yeah, like, very neatly done. Like it, it was a complete accident, but we couldn't have asked for a better fire. Oh, you were, it was your fault too. It was my fault too? Because you threw something on it before you left. I threw, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> so, for reason, everybody we told the story to, it started with, you, My name. you started it, and then yeah. I, whatever. Ooh. A little wet there? You better look at the rolling basket on the way. It ain't full already. How about, which one's the rolling basket? Three? Three. Can I look at it right now? I don't know. Oh no, we're good. We're plenty good. Okay, so that one's fine. I'm full purpose. We're supposed to have constant pressure on the rolling basket, right? I think so. Okay. Drew. I don't know how to run it anymore. <laughs> Engine droop. I don't remember what this does. Adjust percentage of engine RPM drop before the transmission downshifts. 26% sounds okay. Oh, it's not like much. We'll, we'll, we'll go to 30. No, no, 26 is as high as it'll let us go. Um, also, let's, uh, let's turn that off. Actually, we should leave that on. And that's the reason we brought the Gator. Just makes it so much easier to tell how good it's doing if you can drive alongside and actually look at it. So this tractor has the E18 transmission in it, which is like an auto shift type of thing. So basically, the, all these new tractors, they're really designed for you to lug them. They get a lot better fuel economy. And a lot of people are so used to running these things at 2,000 RPMs, you're really not supposed to. So they came out with the auto shift. So basically, um, I have it set, so if it, the engine droops 26% or more, it will shift. I have load anticipation turned on, so that way when I turn around at the end, and then I hit the SCV, it'll anticipate the load coming up and it'll shift accordingly, or not shift if that's better for the transmission. So I'm the only person in my family that likes the auto shift. Everyone else hates it, uh, and no one else runs it, but I always like to run it because well, better fuel economy, and the computer does what's best for the tractor. That's my argument. All right, so we're pulling up a hill right now. We're in 12th gear. If it starts getting too lugged down, it should shift down, but it looks like it's actually gaining RPM now. See, if I was driving it, I would have seen that and immediately shifted down, but the tractor knows what it's doing. Powered through it. So, also what's sad is we're so dry. We haven't had any warming days other than yesterday. And it wasn't even that warm yesterday, it was like 50 some degrees. And uh, there's already dust. 
Yeah. We need rain. And a lot of it. You really had to lower the seat all the way down for two rounds? I made like four rounds. Also, I changed it to um, full uh, manual for you. Okay. <laughs> I need a little workout. Yeah. So what was your census on the uh, rolling basket? I don't know how to get down this bike there. Yeah, that. Unless we look like the makeup, makeup stickers. Unless we make them stick way out. Because they're going to get hit by random... Random flying objects? Stuff. Often. <laughs> well, we had some rear ones on it last year, and we never used them, and they broke off. Last year, I tried to get them right ahead of the walking basket. The rolling basket, you mean? Yeah, what did I say? About the walking. Last year, I tried to get right ahead of the rolling basket. And, uh, it didn't work. Smells fantastic out here. Well, and just like that, about 40 minutes later, we only got one pass left. When you're going 55 foot at a time at like eight to nine miles per hour, it don't take long to get much stuff done. Thumbnail taken. Oh, look at that. It stayed on. Well, there we go. That's all the spring tillage for today, but the video is not over because I gotta go do some other, I gotta do, go do a water test and then uh, get the drill ready for planting tomorrow. Now, sadly, I will not be here when they plant oats, so I will not get that on footage. But if you wanna see us using our Thai drill um, for planting small grains, go up and click this video in one of the corners. I'll have the link in the description too of us uh, planting rye in December, but. Why didn't I just stay in the tractor? I, he's gonna drive right by the gator anyways. Ha! Huh. Speaking of rye, there's a little bit right there. Just starting to poke up. One right there too. Good. Sadly though, this is the stuff that Dad planted. The stuff that I planted is after that flag. That's not coming up. So at South Dakota State University right now, I'm taking a class called Implementations of Chemical Applications. Implement, something like that. Anyways, super good class. We talked all about sprayers, um, how all the plumbing works, different types of nozzles, how to calculate everything. And right now we're talking about water and chemical mixtures and like the order you should mix everything. Anyways, so, Hard water is a big problem when spraying chemicals, especially when spraying glyphosates, because they like to attach to the calcium in hard water, and then it becomes too big to actually be absorbed into a plant. Um, so we usually add AMS, which is a water uh, supplement, or not supplement, water additive that's supposed to bind with the calcium, so that way the glyphosates and chemicals such as Roundup uh, can be free. But um, one thing that they gave us is this pool testing kit so we can test our water's pH and hardness. And then we're supposed to go back and report and make a, like a, an Excel file of everyone's water and then we compare. So this is where we get all of our water to spray our chemicals. And I'm gonna do a water test on it quick. Yes, I rinsed this out a bunch. All right, dip for three seconds, remove water from 15 seconds and then compare. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Okay, well, um, we are very, very high in our water hardness test, and our pH is, this is so hard to tell. I wanna say our pH is a little low. 
So I did the water test. Uh-huh. Hard. Yeah. The hardest. The, the scale of like five dots or six dots. It was past the hardest one. So what does that mean then? Well, I mean, we have to use AMS, obviously, like we have been. Uh-huh. I think we should try, like you said, getting uh, water from the city for a little bit. See what it does. It's been kind of disappointing, though, because since we've added more AMS and mixed it better, it doesn't seem to work any better. No, I'll have to ask some questions. See if our water's too hard. Okay. Alright, so. I'll get your 8410 ready to plant. And get the highway out of the way. Next order of business is I gotta get my dad's 8410T set up to run this drill. Now this drill is not fancy at all. It's just ground driven, no rate control or anything. Um, but last year... He said that it was 27 feet, it was either 27 or 27 and a half feet wide. I don't remember what I planted it at. But um, I just got done remeasuring it. And according to my measurements, it's 26 and a quarter feet wide. So there's a chance that we left either three quarter of a foot or a foot and a quarter gap when we turned around. Because it's 42, here, let me get the calculator. I'm gonna do it in front of you guys. So. It is 42 rows, seven and a half inches wide, divided by 12 inches and a foot, 26 and a quarter feet. Whoops. Also, if anyone wants to buy this drill, um, I'm pretty sure we're selling it after we're done planting oats. So, yeah. It's for sale. Let me know if you're if you just can't live without a tie drill. So there's not a whole lot to set up here. Basically, I made a whole new setup file and it, this one, yada, 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 yada. This one has the new offsets for that drill in it and I put an oats variety in there so it'll show we're actually planting oats. Pretty simple stuff. Well, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.